this is um since you're new I'll explain this is our meet your fellow artist night since we are a pretty big group and we all see each other's work once or twice a year we see one painting it's hard to see the progress that we've made as artists um, so I decided that we would have each member present their history and their artwork yeah. in a meet your fellow artist night so this is what this is okay. And this is Roseanne Al Albanese, and she's, um, how long have you been a member? <laughs> and as you can see, she's a consummate artist. She does everything. But anyway, I'll let her start. So, All right. Uh, here we go. This was interesting when they asked me to show or explain why I painted. I find it quite difficult, and when I got involved in digging through the materials that I've accumulated over the years, I thought, wow, I've really been busy. Um, this, I'll start from the early, early onset of things. When I first got married, my husband bought me a, a paint set. Uh, I was married maybe a year, two years tops. It was a box with the paints and the brushes and da 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 da. And of course, I proceeded to paint. And those were the days of real turpentine, too. So, you know, naturally, my little apartment stunk of turpentine. But these were one of my first paintings. As you can see, this is like this is the very first one. This goes back to 1963, I think. As these are my first oils. This one here, I didn't even know this was a watercolor, but I painted it in oil anyway. So that's what I did with that. And then, of course, I needed something above my couch. So I copied this oh. painting so that I could put this above my couch. <laughs> so we didn't have two nickels to rub together, but that was what we did. So I put that together. Then, <clears throat> as the years went on, I had my children. <clears throat> let's, let's just digress and go back a little bit. Before even that, before I got married, I was always drawn. I always pencil sketched. I always did something, scratching things around. Mm -hmm. This I did when I was 16. Wow. And uh, I was working part time in a little bookkeeping place, and uh, the, 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 the man there wanted to do, he wanted me to do his illustrations for him in his book, which he never made. You know, he never wrote. But I was very flattered by that, so I always kept that. This is me when I graduated high school. You haven't changed much. So, <laughs> so I got the same haircut back. <laughs> and I had to draw from that card. Uh, this was the year that Pope John oh. became the Pope, so I needed to do that. I felt the need to do it. I was in Catholic high school at the time, so um, oh, I always did, uh, you know, religious figures. And in this one in particular, this religious figure of the Blessed Virgin, mm -hmm. I liked, I was studying at that point material and how to make yes. something look like material. Yeah. And here I'm just playing around with horses. Just oh, pretending. Yeah. <laughs> but I had all these things. Don't ask where. It's, everything's smelly. <laughs> but I did have all of this. Then, of course, these guys came along. So uh, I did them. Uh, these were from the photographs, you know, the official photographs that all those uh, photographers come and take of your children. School pictures. Yeah. So uh, I did these. How many kids you got? Four. There are four children here? <clears throat> Well, they're twins. Are they twins? Oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. yes. That's why they look alike. They, <laughs> they look alike. I thought he was the same twice. He <laughs> has the freckle on his forehead. That's Ralph. That's, that's <laughs> he has a freckle. Yeah, that's not, a, that's not an ordinary duck. So, as I said, then we progressed along. <coughs> as we went along, um, let's see. Those are. This is the next stage here. I signed up for a class with Howard Rose at the Huntington Art League. This is the painting that I learned that you could erase in oil, when you're using oils. He came over to me, I had all this stuff on there, and I told the story just last week. He asked if I had a rig and if I had any turp, and I said yes, and he dumped it on, he came and he took the whole thing down. <laughs> and I said, you could erase? I was thrilled. I was, that's so I don't, you never sell this. <laughs> this is that, that painting. And that's how far back that one goes. I think that goes back to 03, maybe. I did something like that. Wow. Um, let's see where else we, I just want to make sure I got the progression going right. These here are sketches that I did in 03, 04, 05, 06. 
I did a, I did a lot of pastel work with uh, Bill Christ and a group that we used to paint with down in uh, West Islip. And these are just some of the ones that I, that I thought were interesting. Uh, these are not the pastels because the pastels were terrible to try to get. They were so old and wrinkled. And <laughs> this is a model from uh, school. Uh, this was in 07. He's also a model from school. She is, uh, what's her name here? Julie. This is Julie and that's Harry. I have oils of these people at home too. I just couldn't carry everything. Of course. You know. Um, wonderful models. As you can see, they are amazing models. Yeah. Uh -huh. They have character faces. They, they are terrific models. So they're great to... Uh, they have personalities. They've yeah. got personalities. They really, and they're lovely people. Absolutely lovely. These I thought were interesting because I used to go and draw in an old age home in Bay Shore. And uh, the old folks, would, they would know ahead of time, and they all gave permission for us to sit. They would be in their sitting room. And they don't move very much. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but she fell asleep. She was asleep. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I have quite a few of them, but I just brought two to show, you know, in general, you know, That's very good. how interesting it is to do anything or anybody that will sit for you at any point in time. They can't move. <laughs> they can't do something. But they will look, and they were not even interested in what you finished as, as far as work went. They didn't care. You know, they just yeah, got really and they said, okay, I'm going to lunch now. But, you know, so that was that. By the way, these things are a great bargain. You get a whole bag of them for a dollar. They're yeah. wonderful. They're clothespins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the dollar store. And they have rubber inside them so that when you put them on here like this, it doesn't damage them. In the dollar store? Dollar store. Rose, did you always want to be an artist as a child? I mean, did you I always aspire to be? I, I was a very, very, very shy person. <laughs> but I really was. I was a very shy person, and most shy people find ways to occupy themselves. We lived in an apartment. There was no room for anything. I always sat and drew. I was able to keep into myself that way, even when I was in school and so on and so forth. It's just that as the, the four kids came along, they kind of brought me out of my little, you know, <laughs> shell. I broke out of my shell. This is a... You know who this guy is. Yeah. This is our Andy. <laughs> and uh, this is just a sampling of uh, what I do when I do a, a you know, a quick sketch, uh, a sit-down sketch for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. I can manage something like this, but this is one of the best ones I've done. This but is I don't have... that is it a quilt? No, these are all oils. Oil. These are all oils. Um, so I, I, I asked that he bring that back in for me, so he gave it to Carol to bring it for me. Um, these are some of the portraits that I do, I've done. Um, these are my granddaughters, that's one, Diane, here's Samantha. Uh, some of the other ones, I, they've already got them in their own homes, so I couldn't collect them. This here painting in itself, not this one, this one, back here, I'll pull it out. Yeah, this is one of the nice ones. That, oh, this is a lovely lady. She's a wonderful model. I took the course with Bert Silverman. When it wasn't a course, it was a workshop. And he was a slave driver, and he had us doing sketches before we even touched our canvas. And I have two sketches. Do I have them both here? I believe I do. Funny how I found all this. Yeah, see, I have two. I started with this one. I didn't like the pose. And then I went to this one and decided on that part of the room, and then I did this pose, and that's how I got that on. Beautiful. That's fantastic. But the thing was, is I, I, do you know you learn something from every stage as you go along? What I learned from this was I worked out all my problems with, pen and pencil, with a pencil and an eraser, and then I put it onto the canvas, and it went on a lot easier. And this was quite some time ago. Also, this was, I think, back in, oh... Five or six. How long maybe. did it take you to do that? The workshop, three days. No, for that painting. Well, don't forget, it was a four-day workshop. Okay. So we, the first day we did nothing but sketching. Like I said, we worked okay. this all out. You finished the sketch first, and then. The then painting. you went into this. Yeah. 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 But you drew it freehand. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had to. The model yes. was sitting there. You had no. You were sitting, I was sitting on a chair just like you. I mean, even on the oil painting, you drew it in a freehand. You didn't. Uh, 
projected. A, a grid. You didn't oh, use you a could, grid. No, I never used grid for because that. Because it didn't allow no, 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 no. Yeah. The only painting I ever used a grid for was that one there. The it's hands. my husband's hands. I had taken multiple photographs. I posed him for that because there was a contest for something to be musical. And uh, you know, it was a pro it was a project we were involved in, and I took lots of photographs of him. That's how I got that on there. But I never show that. That's a personal, private painting. That's Sam. He does not yeah, even play an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't play an instrument. So I just thought it was an interesting, you know, format. You yes. know, I thought that was, uh, you know, nice. It is to very beautiful. So I'll put this back here. Is also another gentleman that posed for us at the Art League. That's where I study. I study at the Art Students League, which is marvelous, by the way. Yeah. Do you still go to Stars and League? Yes, I think I'll probably go there until I can't travel anymore. Yeah. This is also one of the other uh, models I've had. They're interesting people, don't they? Yes. Yes. Wonderful yes. faces. I like interesting faces. Yeah, interesting yeah. faces and a pose and. And I never really put myself in the class where I had to see them dead on. I always took a harder position because I always thought it was better to learn from the harder position. It's beautiful. You know? But it was just a pretty setup. I loved this part. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know? But it, it was an interesting pose, I thought. Um, again, this is my granddaughter, Samantha. She posed for us. I did this in um, Judy Davidson's uh, Friday morning class. I did that one day there. Uh, as I'm progressing along, I don't want to miss out on anything. Right now, I'm involved in mostly I love, uh, I actually love landscapes. I don't have many landscapes at home because most of they sell. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a lot. That's my granddaughter, Samantha. <laughs> I put her in there. Sitting there. Sitting there. And this is Garden Manor Park. That's the little lake there. Beautiful. And I stick close to home because you have I have a lot of varnish on that. Right? This is one of the ones I yeah I varnish and I don't like doing varnish. I don't do varnish in anything else. It's the only one I have like this. It was an experiment. I experiment yeah. with everything. I tear it in what I do a lot of still lifes. This I did in a demo one night uh, for one of the clubs down in uh, where the heck was I? If you get in suburban, I did a demo of this. I like doing still lifes. I'm learning a lot from still lifes. Uh, when it comes to landscapes, I enjoy doing them outdoors more than anything else. As far as doing it with a photograph, I have no, no interest whatsoever. I like being outside with them. <coughs> These are the still lifes I've been working on. I've been going to a man's class, uh, uh, Peter Homitsky's class now for about, this is my third full year. And uh, this is one of the ones that took a prize, I think. <coughs> I think this one took a red dot. That's an intricate one. Yeah, yeah, it just <laughs> fell on. It yeah. literally just fell onto the canvas. He just walks in, puts something down, throws the peppers out, and says, okay, make something out of it. You know, there was no time consuming setups. And he asks that we do something like this at the back of the painting. It's almost like his trademark. Uh, what it does is it helps you uh, yes. define the front from the back. Just gives it another interesting thing, you know. Something. It gives you a perspective. Yeah. 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 I find you it interesting to do. I'm picking it now. Now I'm getting into wilder colors because I'm getting a little bit more rambunctious. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's something else that he likes to do that makes us a little crazy. But he has all these materials with very intricate backgrounds. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, yeah. And the ones that are drying right now will knock your socks off. I couldn't carry them in because they're, <laughs> they're, at, uh, they're at the school. One of the ones that uh, he set out was the material was red and white stripes. And all it was was a paper bag with a little uh, figure on it, like a, a penguin, and three pairs. But he set the material up straight, and he said, okay, now I want you to do something special with the material. So we had to devise our own way of showing that there were curves in wow. it. So everybody you had to imagine them. You had to fix it. You had to redo it. So he's got us now moving things around that are not that? being. Now, his name is Peter Did Homestead. you actually move the Homestead. fabric, or did you no, do it on the canvas? No, I had to do it on, I had to do it on, on the canvas. On the canvis. Yeah. Fantastic. Is this done? Do you want anything with this one? Or this is the way it works? This is the way it was. 
I'm now finally getting to the point. Well, no, actually, there was other line. stuff in here yes, that so I just ignored. A nice <coughs> this a nice it's a very interesting yeah. class. He puts up crazy stuff. He's got wild things coming over here. Um, what else does he have? He's, he really dares your imagination. Yeah, he asks you to uh, play. He asks you to play. He'll do with all copper and red. China flag. It's a China flag. Chinese. Chinese. That's a, that's it's a, an old China flag. It's just, you know, if you look at it long enough, you'll see the tears and the bends in it. Um, you know, he, we were studying copper, and then he put the copper with the oranges on an orange tablecloth. Wow. Duh. <laughs> Talk about going blind. And try painting all this red that really hurts your eyes. It truly hurts your eyes. Um, here's something else he's put together. This I, this I fiddled with. I didn't do it exactly the way it was either. Um, yeah. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Is that red line there or you put the color? I put it there. It wasn't, it wasn't no, there. Oh, he wants you to put a red line? He doesn't there? want us to do any, but he, he, he suggested it earlier on in the training. And now I just pick and choose if I do or I don't, what color I want. Sometimes I put it, sometimes I don't. I chose it because of the... Yeah. Oh, I see. Because onions. of these onions. But uh, know, this vase had flowers in it, and I hate flowers. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make them flowers. I like, see, that line gives you the perspective of the glass. It helps it's make it interesting. It just helps me. I love, clever. you could tell I love the class. So uh, I'm now. Push, push yourself to the edge, right? Keep pushing. Yeah. Yeah. I joined the watercolor class <laughs> because. There was, there is this watercolorist in school. His name is Paul Chingbor, who um, does more. What made you change? I didn't change totally. I just added it into my repertoire. Uh -huh. I want to learn more, and I was curious on how how they came about doing this and why. And these are the types of paintings that are being done there. This is not even it. How it, I didn't even touch on it. He teaches you paint in values. Color is not important. The values are very, very, very important. Where is that? Okay. At the Art Student League. And who is, is it? Who is Paul Chang Bohr. He's a young, he's a, um, a young Oriental man with very limited English vocabulary. So it was, it's very difficult to try to figure out. And he wants to help. He, he's, he's amazing. And he'll come over and he's very talented. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> I keep asking him. And uh, this painting in particular, not this one, I did in his classroom. It's the first one I did. This painting had that coloring, all that here. This was all dark because I copied what was in the photograph. It was all shadows with a few little specks of light. And in his inimitable way, he wanted me, and he told me, get it out of there so that you balance the pictures. He said, you want to make art. You don't want to duplicate the photograph. You want to make art. Change it. So we found this sponge. There's a, a white magic, what is it? Mr. Clean's magic eraser. I could take this whole painting off of here if I wanted. Oh, how nice. It would take it all off. Do you wet it? Well, yes. Yeah. You, know. you soak it. Yeah, that stuff is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And I and I went on there and boom, and I took it right off. And Mr. Clean's right. Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. Yeah. 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 I like the effects that you have. The the shading and it's just the beautiful. concrete. This yeah, the, this yeah. was a photograph that I took of Union Square Park about five six years ago when I went in to do plein air painting, which I was trying to learn then. We never really accomplished anything. I took photographs because there were so many junkies and people selling guns and drugs in the yeah. bar. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> so I started snapping away like crazy. It was a whole bunch of us, and we all stuck together because we didn't want to be separate. Mm -hmm. And then we, we told it. We got a hold of the instructor, Joe Peller. He's my best bestest buddy. We never go in there again. <laughs> Remember that. We never go there again. From Joe Peller, I learned um, how to paint. Uh, from this man, I'm learning how to see. Uh, Joe taught me how to interpret warm against cool and how to figure out 
where to put it, what colors to use to create it. And when you, and I do it in everything now, and I do it in my watercolors too. I set the same palettes up in my watercolors and in my oils. I have my warms and my cools, so that when I'm thinking of a shadow, I'm not thinking of a color, I'm thinking of a, is this going to be warm or cool? I will put red into a shadow. It, there is color in shadows. <laughs> I know. They say you never, <laughs> you never know. put warm colors in the shadow. Right? Warm colors, yeah, purples, cool. oranges. That's right. You know, that's what you need to use to make it percolate. <laughs> you know, and that's what I've learned uh, over the years. Joe Peller taught me how to mix color, uh, how to, uh, and it was not a matter of how to. He, I just kept doing it until I got it right, and then finally he said, you got it. <laughs> and then I kissed him and I hugged him. <laughs> but it took me a whole year to figure out what he was talking about. I did not know what he was talking about. So uh, this has been my trip uh, over the years. I love painting. I love just sitting, sketching. I will watch TV sometimes in dead of winter, and I have TiVo, and I'll put something on the freeze hold and quickly sketch it to keep practicing. If I find a certain pose or a certain face or the way a hand is, is turned a certain way, I'll freeze it and grab my, and I sit and it hits next to me is my sketchbook and my pencil and I always do that. Oh. I always do that. Do you work it in watercolor water? I have a lot of watercolor paintings. <clears throat> I couldn't carry them. They're under glass. They're in, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do more. Yeah, I like the way it, it, it's, the effect is good. I can make that same effect, I can do this exact same painting in oil and get the same exact effect. I use the principle of warm against cool in this too. Yeah. Was this painting here plein air? No, this was from a photograph. This is the photograph I took of Union Square Park where all the junkies were and I couldn't paint that day. So I took photographs. And uh, that's what I, that's how, and it was just a little bitty photograph. Uh, when I did sign up for this class. made it dark instead and wiped it off. Yeah, right? yeah. Beautiful. So then, when you use that, whatever the magic, you just kind of pull, pull that effect. Yeah, and I pulled the paint, and literally I was pulling the paint off to get to the white of the paper. That's what I did. It was like a rainy too. day. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. after it stops raining and the sun it gives it that it nice effect. Like it gives it a very nice effect. At the, at the demo, you, you painted it. I showed it. you what I did, right? And yeah. then I and then cleaned you it up again. It. And you can spray and it. And let it drip. Let it drip. You could do whatever you want to it. I have a painting home that I did that with. It was also there. <coughs> and I took a, I just took a photograph of the buildings. And what I did was is I painted it in purples and greens and let the whole thing drip. And all the buildings are all crooked. But it's a nice painting. When I had done a watercolor, I used some of that. Uh, that Misfit. Yeah. I'm not fan. I'm not a fan of that and, at all. You know, when I was doing like waves and water, mm -hmm. and I had put that around. Yeah. And then when I took it off, I got a nice effect. I was wondering if you used that at no, all. No, not at all. Not at all. Not okay. at all. No. As a matter of fact, the brushes we used were this big. Yeah. They were this big. The hockey brushes. The hockey brushes. Yeah, the hockey brushes. Yeah, the hockey brushes. Wide, wide. wide, the hockey brushes. And, but except for like when I was doing like a little of the detail work, then I have my other. I have the, uh, mostly <coughs> these oriental brushes on here because they hold the most uh, pigment and the most water. So that when you're working, you're not constantly looking to go back. Yeah. And once you load it up, you've got yourself something to work with. You know, so it's comfortable to, to accomplish. I have a question. Um, most of your oils and even your watercolor, it's it's a study of light and darks and shadows and colors. And now your oh surreal painting here. Could you explain yes. that because uh, it's uh, all right. right? Because you were saying you want to learn about who I am and what mm -hmm. I am. Okay, yes. this is me. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. What happened was was initially I had. Um, I was doing a self-portrait, <coughs> and it was me without, and I said, yeah. gosh, that's boring. <laughs> it had nothing of me. Uh -huh. So I started to play. I said, I was not happy with it, I'm playing with this. So what I did was, is I put a mask on, <coughs> um, I started just accumulating the things of my life, and the things I loved, and, and where I grew up. So I'll explain this to you. Like yeah, I was going to say, yeah. there's a glass of Oh, that's my favorite term. <laughs> okay. This is the building that I lived in. This is the building I grew up in. Where was that? 
on Baxter Street in Little Italy, right off of Hester. Really? The next block down, it's right off the canal, the next block down from Mulberry Street. It's Chinatown. Right? It's Chinatown. I went to school in Chinatown. This is my grandmother. So this is our build, this is our apartment here. This was my grandmother's apartment here. She was my guiding angel. Here she is. She was the angel on my shoulder. She let me draw and do whatever I wanted. I would always go and sit with her, stay with her on Saturday night, sleep all over. She was my baby, <laughs> my love. Um, these are my four children. That's nice. <laughs> the embryos. <laughs> this here is a movie house that we would go to uh, every Saturday morning, pack a lunch, and go there. You saw two feature films, a newsreel, six, six cartoons, <laughs> a serial. You were there from <laughs> nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a dish, the 25 cents. <laughs> And it was called, the, the name of the, the place, it was the Bowery. It was right on the Bowery. So we used to have to walk all the way up Hester Street, go to the theater, it was the Bowery. It was wonderful. And the one movie that, I don't know what it did, but I'll never forget it, and it was The African Queen. I was amazed. The I'm African well Queen, that. it brought you into a country that I, I never imagined. Yeah. I didn't know it existed. The acting was phenomenal. Uh, it woke up a lot of things in me that were interesting, and I was curious about a lot of things like that. So I, I kind of highlighted that a little bit. These are my wedding bands uh, for my husband and I. He was in the uh, submarine, mm. so he pinned me Sam. while we were dating. Ah. <laughs> Sam. Sam's, yeah, he had the, the uh, dolphins. dolphins. Yeah. I loved roller skating. I lived on a block on Baxter Street and Canal, and Canal had like a slight hill going down. And we, wrote, me and my friends, would roller skate around that block a gazillion times. <laughs> race to go down that Canal Street side, come back all the way around, start at the top and go back down again. And we would race around. No knee pads and no helmets. <laughs> <laughs> and the boys used to go in the street and then dodge the cars. Oh, no. You know? But uh, that, and of course I have that, that little world skate key too, because you remember that too. Oh, right? that's <laughs> terrific. What a um, idea. I always loved reading. Yes. Um, dance around the clock, you know, rock around the clock. This is my around. time. Yeah. That was my time. We all, there was a bunch of girls, we would all dance together every night, every week we would have club night. And each house we would go to, buy donuts and coffee. Dance to the music, never do homework, because we used to pretend we were going to do homework. <laughs> and have such a good, good time, you know. Uh, we still are all in touch with each other, by the way, so it's just nice. And the drinks, when did they come in? The mm. drinks came in after I got married with all those hats. <laughs> I needed them. I needed those. I always wore hats, and those were the days where you wore high heels high when you went to work, regardless yeah. of how far away you were That's from work. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> My love over my heart is painting. Yes. And uh, this is me. I'm not done. At this stage of the game, I felt I was not, I'm not done yet. Matter of fact, I'm just starting to feel like I'm coming into my own. A person in progress. Yeah. I'm still, it's a work in progress. What's the little dress? The skirt and blouse. These, yeah, this blouse. is the uniform I had to wear for four years at Cathedral High School. <laughs> and we burnt it the day we graduated. <laughs> I mean, it stood up in a corner and we just boom, lit it up, you know. But uh, that, that was my uh, uniform. Was that called a midi or what they call it? The skirt was down to here. Yeah. No, no, the, the blouse. And that was a nylon blouse. It was up no. to here and down to here. Long sleeves, yeah. high color. Long, well, high color, the whole works. With that a little bow tie after school. 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 Yeah. yeah. They kids were dressed those years. <laughs> you had to get dressed in those years. Okay. So, what's the blue thing above your palette, or the gray? Uh, it's it's just I was going to put write something on that plaque, and I never did. I never found anything of interest to put on there. So my next portrait, I might do it. I'll uh -huh. see. Very beautiful I'll idea. See. And I just thought, if I, you know, I just thought, you know, this could be done for just about anybody. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yes. Anybody just needs to. Be willing to reveal their thoughts. Their thoughts. Is that angel done? Or is that, is this that angel is done. This is my grandmother. That's a great idea, though. It's a ghost of an angel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people who have a mental block or, you know, they're stuck. Yeah. I just did it around. An ordinary, an ordinary portrait to, for me was not suitable because that was not me. 
<laughs> that's that's your life, really. Yeah, this is my life. And pretty much, I believe that's it. Um, I think I've covered all my bases, pretty much. Yep. Okay. I believe that's it, folks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Right now, no. Right now, I'm just involved in, I, I got a commission, a couple commissions I'm working on. One is a portrait, one I did a building, another one now I just got commissioned to do something I've never done before, so it's going to be exciting. Uh, he wants, for his office, a lawyer, and he wants two giant pieces, but he wants bold colors, and he fell in love with uh, this style. That's so Subject matter. Yeah. He liked the color, the color impact, the impact of the color he was very interested in. So uh, I will probably do something in the, along the lines of a uh, still life, but I will, it will almost be a still life, maybe not quite, but he wants two of them. So I told him, you know, just tell me what colors you want, I'll, I'll create it. I just was making the canvases today. So I'm yeah, kind of busy yeah. with that. Yeah, which is fun. What size canvas? 30 by 40. That's nice yeah, size. Big ones, yeah. yeah. And he says he's got two big walls, he wants to put them in the back of his desk. Wonderful. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Is that a saga? No. No, this is somebody else. <laughs> you know? And when it rains, it pours. <laughs> yeah, and you establish a price and everything before you started? Or? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. What I'm doing, I found a, a, a method of doing, thanks to Elaine. Yeah. And her okay. forms. Yeah, Those forms are marvelous. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in creating the price, uh, structure that I decided was figured out how many hours it would take me mm -hmm. to accomplish the painting and then figure out how much I want per hour mm -hmm. and multiply it out. And when you present it in that fashion, in particular with lawyers, they understand because they understand billable hours. Mm -hmm. Of course. You see? So, you know, you don't have to say, well, the, the, the canvas is this big, but it's going to take me so many hours to That's accomplish right. this That's right. at such and such per hour. Do you agree? And they do. Wonderful. And it worked. Yeah, I do that. Billable hours. Yeah, yeah. My husband yeah. should do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had to think about it for quite some time before I finally came up, you know, up to it. And then what I do now, thank God for the computers, is I email the pictures back and forth. Do you agree with this? Is this working for you? Blah, 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 blah. You know, you're welcome to come to the studio, take a quick peek, but no, I love it. They're so busy, they don't even want to come to the studio. So, uh, now, another facet of your, your world is, we want to know, uh, you and your family, how do you spend your time? I say Sundays is my family day. Okay. My family is all part of this. They come in, I'm in the studio, they walk into the kitchen, Grandma, what are we eating today? Uh, my kitchen and my studio are right one. Are one. They're all together, you know. Um, they, they're first. Yes. They're always first. Very good. Yeah, they're always first. Did you travel in your life? Did you go away from Long Island? I've done that. I'm not... I like painting what I live with. I like painting my neighborhood. I am painting my town right now. I'm doing the buildings in my town on my, yeah, by myself. Yeah. And right now it's for them hanging at the Simon's office. Because, yeah, yeah. And they, they're thrilled to have them there. They haven't bought them, but they have, they, I, I gave them on loan. But that's how I got a commission. So to me, that was the open door to get the commission. Once I get my little, you know, yeah. it works. It's working. A little bit at a time. I overstress myself. I get crazy. <clears throat> you know. <laughs> I do. It's just my nature. My husband leaves me alone. <laughs> you know, I'll call him in and I'll say, come on, what do you think? What's happening? And he just stands there and goes, tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> Is that the right color? <laughs> you know. But he's good. He's very, very good. And then, of course, we have all good friends that come running over. Tell me if this is working. <laughs> you know, I'm not quite sure, you know. It's very hard to do a commission because you're painting with somebody else's eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes I find that very difficult to do. And how do you prejudge how many hours it's, it will take you? Can I can you? tell. Oh, I can tell it by the amount of work involved. Well, well you yeah. know how fast like, you paint. Yeah, I know how fast I can paint. Mm -hmm. Like that that only took me, that painting down there uh, took me six yeah. hours. 
I love it. it. I love it. That watercolor. It's, it's a watercolor. It's, it's a watercolor. What do you mean? The watercolor is magnificent. Shoo, shoo, shoo. It's just beautiful. <laughs> now, when I, mean, I, I find sometimes, uh, you know, as I'm going along, I'm struggling with the painting, and it's taking me, you know, weeks on end to yeah, accomplish by so many. That's weeks, but you're. But you're sometimes, said, you know, two hours here, one hour there. You know, right. You, but other times, I can sit down and think about a painting, or have, uh, you know, what small inspiration I get. And be done in a half an hour to 99% right. completion. So, you know, so it really I it's, it's depends on. It's not easy to figure. It's yeah. just not easy to figure. Yeah. Like these these still lifes that I do in the class. When I go there, I'm only there. Excuse me, half a day. Uh, I get to the school at um, 8:30. The teacher gets there at 9:30. He sets up the still life, and I leave at 12:15. And they only do the still life two weeks in a row. So that's how I get these still lives together. So oh. figure out how many hours. What was that? Six hours? Six total? hours, mm -hmm. yeah. And basically, that's all it should take. It shouldn't take more than that. Mm -hmm. After that, it's overworked. Yes. It's stiff. Mm -hmm. it's, it uh, up to the expense. It's way, right. past, it's way past where it should be. Yeah. So this took me six. Each one of these took me six hours. Mm. That's fantastic. You know? But uh, this one I did, my, my granddaughter, she came and sat for me. And she was talking and eating at the same time. <laughs> Heaven help me. <laughs> but this one never stops talking. <laughs> you got me going by giving me the gift of uh, the acrylics. You got Out of the blue, she gave, brought her box of acrylics. Brand new. She says, Thea, yeah. because she heard me say I like to try acrylics. Now that's a person that I love. <laughs> said, oh my God, yes, I'll try it. She yeah, do them. Use them. I'm, I, I'm not going to use them. So use them. No, it's wonderful. Somebody Thank should. You. Thank you, know. you very much, yes. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I love to draw, I love beautiful, to paint, beautiful, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful that I can share it. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Love you.